Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar, Digitally Reopening Your Online Presence, a look at Google My Business, Yelp, and TripAdvisor post-COVID-19 closures. And thank you to FRLA for having us this morning. A couple of housekeeping things. If you're all on mute and we'll take questions here at the end, please use the chat box to post your questions as we go along and we'll answer them at the end of today's webinar. And yes, we are recording the session today and it will be emailed out to everyone in attendance today. So let's go ahead and get started. My name is Angela Vaughn and I am the Marketing Solutions and Operations Manager for Miles Partnership. I work with Miles Hospitality Division where I get to work daily hand in hand with businesses just like yours, hotels, management companies, restaurants, spas, and attractions. Today, I'm gonna to share with you all some updates from the last few months during COVID closures and share the insider tips and tricks we have learned along the way, helping our clients reopen their businesses digitally to begin to welcome guests again. The online world is vast and managing your online presence can seem very overwhelming with so many digital channels to maintain. We're gonna to focus today on the big three, Google My Business, Yelp, and TripAdvisor. Before we get into those three channels, let's take a look at traveler confidence and why we should be reopening our online digital presence. So let's dive right in. We're going to start with consumer search behavior. As travelers reemerge, the one thing that won't be different is they'll be looking for information online. They'll be looking for places to eat, where to stay, things to do, among their other travel needs. What will be different though, is they'll be more concerned about safety. As you've already heard, safety is a primary concern for many travelers right now. There's been a significant spike in safety-related travel searches, and search demand for those topics continue to remain what we consider elevated compared to normal search volume. Search demand for travel is starting to recover as well, although that audience is a little divided across the spectrum of behavior. There will be some people who are gonna rush out ready to travel again, and there's others who are a little bit more timid and who are going to dip their toe into the water before fully traveling again. But many travelers, they're gonna be thinking about safety in new ways as part of their trip planning. And according to data from destination analysts, 79% of US travelers will research how destinations are managing COVID-19. For businesses, one of the best ways to help tackle this with consumer uncertainty is by making it easier for them to find information they're gonna be looking for online. This is gonna start with how your business responds by improving safety of both employees and potential guests alike. The key to welcoming back travelers is gonna to be to help them understand they can still enjoy their vacation and feel safe while doing so. As you're thinking about reopening in the road to recovery for the travel industry as a whole, there's a few things that we like to keep in mind and keep a key communication open with these potential visitors. Following these three steps, improving safety, sharing information, and growing visibility of your online business. It'll help you capitalize on all the opportunities from those who are locals and those potential guests who are going to be coming to visit you. Your specific actions may vary by industry, but you should be following scientifically based best practices and industry guidance to improve safety for visitors and for your employees. There are tons of resources available and even reliable organizations such as Visit Florida. This includes recommendations about sanitation, practices, personal protective equipment, social distancing, and more. There's also industry-specific guidance from national associations like US Travel and the American Hotel Lodging Association. Different types of businesses may need different types of actions, but these changes, they'll be foundational to success with visitors. And it's not gonna be enough to say that it's different but you actually need to be backing it up with action and telling people how it's different. And safety doesn't have to be boring either, guys. 
among several states that have eased restrictions, there's been some fun ways we've been seeing people of how to actually communicate safety and stay safe. For instance, we saw these amazing bumper tables at Fishtails Bar and Grill in Ocean City, Maryland, and even the social distancing skunk ape at Gatorland in Florida. Google My Business is continuing to be a driving force for businesses in their digital presence. It's the number one organic source of information related to your online business. It delivers your business listing based on branded, direct, and discovery searches. During the last few months, Google has released and paused future features and has also implemented auto listing updates based on local ordinances. So let's dive into a few of those. First, let's take a look at some things that might have happened automatically to your listing based on the local ordinances. Did you know that businesses were marked as closed automatically? Forward facing to the public, Google put a large red banner across your listings as temporarily closed. Now, you as an owner, upon logging into your listing, you might see a bright orange warning marked as closed from Google. Now, Google's trying to be helpful to the consumers searching for businesses who are open, but what are they not automatically doing? Helping you, the business owner, because they don't know what your new operations are. And so you need to actually go in and reopen your business listings. You must log into your GMB account and physically mark it as open. In fact, have you actually taken a closer look at your listings recently? Not only did Google automatically close your business listings based on category types, they also auto updated amenities within your listings info section. Now, if you've not logged in, you might be delivered at review updates notice in your location group. And then again, within your owner panel, your info section, an additional notice with a link to accept all for this location. Now, please don't click on accept all. We don't recommend clicking on it. We recommend taking a few minutes and going through these listing updates that are marked in bright orange and choosing whether to update them or to accept them or append them. One update that we've seen as the most common for restaurant categories is under planning and service options. While many restaurants started offering takeout the last few months and they weren't able to ask, actually have guests come in for dining, many listings were auto updated for the no dine-in and added takeout. As you're reopening and welcoming guests within your local guidelines back to your physical location, you need to go in and manually change this and update it so then that way you actually are accepting people who are dining in. So that way you can be delivered for consumers who are searching for this type of offering. Business attributes influence the visibility of your business when users search for specific types of locations. So if someone searches for places that offer curbside pickup, or that are pet friendly or that have a romantic atmosphere, showing up in these results is influenced by that data and the algorithm. So that way they can find your business. There's an increased visibility for some COVID specific attributes like delivery and curbside pickup now because those frequent searches are so much higher than normal. Google has added a new set of attributes for a variety of different business categories since the pandemic. These attributes are helping the algorithm better understand business offers, offerings and what consumers are searching for. And it will influence your invisibility within the search results. It's a good time to go through and just fully recheck your listing and make sure everything's accurate. For example, if you're a restaurant that doesn't have dine-in at the moment, make sure that's marked as dine-in so that way people don't physically show up to your location. It's important information for both locals and potential guests to the destination to be able to find. So this is another section. There's, there's two ways to go in and update your hours within Google, depending on what kind of changes you're trying to make. For long-term changes to hours, you'll want to use the business hours section in the info tab and go in and physically update your Monday through Saturday, Friday and Saturday and Sunday and weekends. And it's great because you can add multiple times if you have different services for different hours. Another feature is special hours. Special hours is used to update the holiday hours typically for a business or when you're gonna be closed for a limited amount of time and you're not wanting to use the temporary closure. You'll find this option directly below the hours section in your Google My Business info tabs. Now, the temporary closed and the hours conversations are very varied 
across the web, guys. In the beginning, Google claimed that using temporarily closed wasn't going to impact search results, but it actually did start impacting search results in April based on some findings across the Googleverse. For our clients, we use specialty close dates so the listings could still be delivered in what is considered a direct and those discovery search results for those who are still dreaming about travel. And not to get even more confusing, this has an additional layer for hotels to deliver in what we call the four pack for the hotel finder. But we'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a few slides. It's very important to go in and update this type of information because the local data accuracy, including these hours and communication are critical at a time like this for updating and reflecting your business is open again and ready to welcome those guests. It's making sure that you're getting that increased search visibility across desktop search and even within Google Maps. Insider tip, if a business is marked as temporarily closed, these attributes for dining that we saw, such as if you've got your restaurant marked as offering takeout and delivery, you shouldn't be marked as temporarily closed, even if you're not welcoming people to dine in, because your business listing won't be delivered in a search result if you're marked as temporarily closed. Google released also a new feature to let you set more hours. And this is one of the most recent releases we've seen. More hours are categories by types of hours, for instance, if you are a restaurant and you want to have special hours for seniors to dine, or if you have special pickup hours for takeout that are not specific to a hotel restaurant, but maybe you're using your catering kitchen to do an all-day takeout menu, or if you have uh, special access for certain hotel amenities. Now when you go in your Google My Business account, you can click on the Info tab under your main hours, and you'll see the option to Set More Hours. When you click on the pencil to set it, it'll ask you to pick one of these categories and you can actually sit there and determine these pickup times and it'll deliver as a search result. For most businesses, the single largest exposure point within Google's product is what we're calling the local pack. This local pack, it appears in the search results when users for a business, when a user searches for a business category or type plus a location associated with it. And it could be not something that is a physical location of like uh, hotels near me in Waikiki. It could just be hotels near me. And based off the geolocation of the searcher, Google knows to automatically pop in that geolocation. So for example, hotels in Waikiki, for non-accommodation business types, the local pack includes a map and three business listings. However, for an accommodation search, the local pack is actually replaced with a very compact version of the hotel finder, which includes four hotels and a map as shown in this example with a relevant pricing. The hotel finder consequently, the local pack for the accommodations won't include an indication if the accommodation was marked as temporarily closed. And so this can sometimes be a little frustrating for a consumer, how they're actually going to be appearing in these search results. They're prioritized based off of availability set within an OTA or within your direct availability for inventory in the hotel finder. So many of you have probably seen a post feature within your Google My Business profile. The post feature has been a tool in GMB for more than a year now, and it's a great opportunity to share information about your business and search results. Google Maps and other products, it feeds across the entire Google travel ecosystem. In late March, Google added a COVID-19 update and it provides an easy way to share information about what changes and in safety info is associated with your business listing. Posts are great. Posts are free to use. There's no click to um, click cost per click to use this. You can use campaign tracking to also measure the effectiveness of the traffic you're sending to your website from your post. You can include images and videos, and there's also ways to incorporate calls to action and link to more information, or even have a click to call button. As you all re-log into your GMB accounts, you're gonna be delivered this little stay connected during COVID-19 dashboard from Google. And it's gonna give you two options update your business hours, and post your COVID-19 update. 
hours are going to be the single largest piece of information that is constantly changing as everyone is reopening and adjusting. And across all digital platforms, you're going to notice this common theme. Like that is what everybody is asking for right now is just please update your hours. It's really important to know that, yes, a Google post is free advertising. And whether your business is still open or temporarily closed, the post to communicate with consumers is just one way to stay connected and keep momentum on your listing. And this may be really frustrating to a hotel who has a GMB. You'll be delivered this dashboard for your COVID-19 and it will even say, you can click here to post a COVID update. And it's really frustrating and I'm sorry guys, but it's actually still not available for hotels. Even though hotels can see it, you will be delivered sorry post or unavailable at this time for your business listing. If you're not getting the COVID-19 dashboard in your login, you can access that tool still via the post tab in Google My Business. You will see the button to create a new post, which will then open a template where you can add content to your listing. And the very first icon in the panel, you have the ability to add a COVID-19 update. For those of you who have the ability who can post a COVID-19 update, there does appear to not have a same set of rules as traditional post in GMB. It's rather odd. For instance, on desktop search, if you add a COVID-19 post update, a couple of things happen. The first thing we discovered is that the COVID section takes a higher priority in the business listing panel in desktop search. It goes just above the questions and answers section in the panel. Secondly, it hides any other posts in desktop that were appearing. It's just a very odd move for Google since the posts typically appear last in the panel order in desktop search. Now, that's just the desktop search, guys. On Google Maps, it's reacting very differently. It shares the same spot as the other post and becomes secondary in display. So for a consumer to see your COVID-19 updates, if you have other posts already posted, they would need to click on the post to display. At this time, if your restaurant wants to promote your safety measures and promotions, we would actually recommend doing all updates through the post feature rather than with the COVID-19 updates feature since it hides posts in desktop search. Now, as with all things in Google, this is subject to change before we even end today's webinar. They're constantly trying to find ways to improve, to help businesses and consumers find you. Over the last several weeks, users submitted reviews to GMB listings, and Google actually delayed or withheld them from publishing and didn't allow owners or manager responses, and it was completely disabled. In the first week of April, Google announced that reviews would begin appearing again and re-able the manager replies function. At least weekly, you should all be checking the positive and the negative reviews that were posted for your business and replying as appropriate. This is a good time to go and catch up on replies that might have fallen behind from consumers over the last few months. And you'll notice if you logged in while this was disabled for Google, they have actually gone in and backdated all of this to the time that it was actually posted. So if you logged in during April before they reenacted it, you may notice that you have a review that is six weeks old that you hadn't seen previously. This is them reactivating it. Similar to reviews, the questions and answer panel in your business profile had been disabled for several weeks, and we've not seen them fully return across the board yet for all categories and all regions. Google has signaled that it will be returning slowly by region and by type, continuing over across the next several weeks and months. This is a place you wanna keep a sharp eye out for questions and answers. This has historically been a format for consumers to voice concerns. So plan to actually develop your own FAQs and ask yourself a question and answer yourself a question in the questions and answers section on your profile. You can start even developing some that are specifically related to COVID-19 and answer those customer safety questions as soon as that panel returns. For accommodation business types, 
the hotel attributes section of Google My Business is one of the key influence areas to enhance your exposure. Recent changes as a result of COVID-19 have introduced new tags for restaurants, which we saw, which directly affects whether a business appears in searches. But the accommodations, you should all be keeping an eye out for additional attributes as they're becoming available to ensure you're not missing out on potential exposure. One of the newest ones we've seen recently is the COVID-19 responder policy. There's not a lot of detail here. All it is is simply checking, do you have a policy or do you not have a policy for special accommodations or discounts for those first responders, such as healthcare, medical workers, first frontline responders, and essential workers. A few other things not necessarily related directly to COVID. Based on our research, businesses can actually continue to increase their visibility of their listings by continuing to add new photos on a regular basis. Adding just a couple of photos each month to your business listing can increase your visibility with consumers. And in, during our testing, we actually found out four to five photos per month is actually increasing lift for 10 to 30%. And that's not an immediate lift. This is typically seen as a lift 45 to 60 days after this action is taken. Following best practice to help improve your visibility is also those up-to-date business hours. They're going to continue to be a higher priority, influencing the visibility for specific kinds of searches across all of the products and services. This is one of the most common pieces of information that continues to still be missing for the business listings according to our analysis. And following these best practices, just to recap real quickly, will improve your visibility. So make sure you're posting regularly. Make sure you have high quality listings associated with your photos. Having services and attributes fully completed, make sure you're monitoring them so that way you can see if anything's automatically being changed and ensuring you have a consistent name, address, and phone number across all your digital platforms. Not to be left out, Yelp has been making great strides to help their businesses reopen digitally and attract potential new customers as you reopen too. Yelp continues to be an influential platform for consumer reviews and has hundreds of millions of active users. In March, the company released a new feature that allows businesses to share updates directly on the listing in Yelp. If you haven't logged in recently, there will be a generic message, but you can customize that once you've logged in as the business owner. You'll see a prompt to edit the message. It's just a super easy way to make updates, and it's a similar box in your owner dashboard with only a one click through link. In this link, though, there's going to be a few features that are really easy to use, making closing or reopening your digital listing very easy. You can simply click and close and mark it as temporarily closed through a certain date. This is a great feature as it reopens your business online automatically, and Yelp will even send you, the business owner, a reminder that your business has been reopened online in case you want to log in and readjust. You can even set up a custom banner message to those who are looking at your profile on Yelp. It doesn't matter if you're closed or if you're reopened or if you have adjusted hours. This preview message is 120 characters, but you can have a full message up to 1,500 words. And so how does this all look? To a potential guest, it's very informative. At the top, it's clearly displayed when your business is closed through. And also above the what we call the digital fold, it delivers your custom message. When you have those longer messages, the advisory alert will be automatically linked to the full message after users click on it. Content-wise, you're gonna wanna make sure you're sharing the most important information first for that first 120 characters. Be sure you're including updates related to the changes in services, in your hours, your sanitation practices. In editing the message, you can edit it as many times as you need once you've logged in as a business owner. Now that businesses have been set up as closed, how do we actually go in and reopen them? Reopening your business on Yelp is simple. They tell you in the owner dashboard that your business is set as temporarily closed, and you just simply click on the leak, which takes you to a page where you, you guessed it, update your hours, 
and uncheck the temporarily closed box, then save. That's it, your business is reopened on Yelp. Once you've reopened your business, you'll be displayed a new set of choices. This new section in your COVID-19 updates link, it's just in the last week or so that we started seeing this for the restaurant listings, and you can begin to break out what you're offering the potential diners, whether it's takeout, delivery, dine-in, pickup, outdoor seating, and they even took it one more step and highlight the additional safety measures your business has in place, such as you're limiting your capacity, your social distancing, mask are required, hand sanitizer provided. This is a really great tool to have in place in case diners are actually interested in what safety measures you have. Yelp has taken a very similar approach with the hotel listings as well. It's a little simpler. Initially, are you offering on-premise access? So are you actually allowing people to come to your property? And they are also giving hotels the same option to outline their additional safety measures in place. I think you're going to notice this is going to become um, the new standard of all of your digital presence of outlining what additional safety measures you have in place. According to Yelp's data, there's been a huge increase in consumers looking for takeout and delivery options during the last couple of months. And this isn't a huge surprise to any of us. In response to the shifting demand, there's also new options available inside of Yelp, including their business attributes and service options, and they've added and started to change since the pandemic. These are gonna include expanded options um, and attributes. And so making sure your business is represented accurately can have a huge impact on your visibility with potential customers who are searching within Yelp. Businesses who have more complete information are benefiting from increased visibility right now because the platform wants to optimize towards what consumers are actually searching for. There's lots of different types of businesses and it's not just restaurants that they're doing this for. To see what information is present for your listing, go to biz.yelp.com and select basic information to see whether your, info, whether your business is up to date or not. If you have an online services that weren't available before COVID, make sure those are listed as well, because these are also impacting search results. There's also new options that have been released in Yelp for virtual services under the category section. And these are more related to virtual services since COVID-19. And again, Yelp is going to highly encourage all business owners to go in and make updates. The business hour functions are the same in Yelp as they are in Google. You can update your full business hours, or if you're no longer gonna be open on Tuesdays, you can go in and say, I'm just not gonna be open on Mondays and Tuesdays. And you can make the changes to single days as needed and even add uh, different hour sets for different days. Yelp even added new badges that can be set up for your listings that are COVID-19 specific. And this is actually available to all categories and all listings. So maybe your hotel is providing, um, no, it wouldn't be remote services, but maybe you're providing online classes or virtual estimates. Um, hotels and restaurants can provide drive-through or curbside, right? And so these would be things that you might wanna associate with your listing for those who are searching for those new types of features. Yelp has also enhanced their calls to action for paid promotions with the newly COVID-19 appropriate CTAs. They've added these types of call to actions for paid programs, such as support us with gift cards, to-go options, now offering curbside service, so that way you can be really specific in the type of messages and actions you want people to take with your paid advertising within Yelp. These aren't available through the self-serve dashboard. So if anyone is interested in that, I highly recommend reaching out directly to Michael at Yelp to find out more information on how you can set those up. Let's go ahead and talk about TripAdvisor as well. 74% of surveyed travelers said a checklist of safety measures on TripAdvisor listings would be very or extremely helpful to them. To help traveler confidence, TripAdvisor just this last week launched a new Travel Safe initiative, which is allowing partners to share a checklist of their safety measures and their overall response to COVID-19. 
businesses that are activating the checklist are supposed to benefit from listing page updates to capture that traveler attention within a notification at the top of the page, enhanced reviews of gathering more recent visitor information and safety experience. And this is the newest one that's supposed to launch today, actually, is the COVID search filter to increase visibility and drive bookings and ensuring travelers are finding they're searching for hotels with the additional safety precautions outlined in the search results. For those interested in sharing the message directly on your page, it's super simple to add through your owner profile. If you're looking for what should I share in this space, TripAdvisor has put together some great points of how to actually put together your message. The content that you're putting together ideally would have the frequency of the room and common area cleanings, the additional cleaning products that you're putting in place, the self-service options that you're also implementing, and staff hygiene has actually been a huge search feature as well. Additional tips TripAdvisor is recommending when you're delivering a message to potential guests is making sure all of your contact details, while they're optional, they actually recommend putting that in your message. The message specific within TripAdvisor, they actually have 25 characters as the minimum and 1,000 as your maximum. So this is a little bit reduced in what Yelp was offering. So if you have a really long message on Yelp, you may want to make it a little bit more concise on TripAdvisor. A few things changed also on TripAdvisor during the last few months with reviews. We all are kind of familiar with what the review guidelines are for uh, past guests and diners to post a review. During this time, though, TripAdvisor is taking this approach to start manually assessing any reviews that were posted with the terms COVID-19 or coronavirus and other variations of it. And so they're manually going in to make sure that if that content can be posted and associated with your business listing. Another great thing they're doing is they're being proactive in removing any content that is discouraging people um, to comply with government guidelines, local guidelines. It's also, they're removing content that discourages people from seeking medical help or testing. And they're also, which is really great for businesses, they're removing any review that's criticizing you as a business owner for being closed at any point in time during this. TripAdvisor's published in a really amazing white paper in May, guys, and I highly recommend you go take a look at this. It's the analysis of the road to recovery for the global travel and hospitality industry, and it's based on their extensive quantitative survey and site behavior. And they included five distinct stages of recovery in their white paper. And it provides insight into what each of the five stages looks like, predicting how long they'll last, and what it might mean for your business planning and your marketing strategies in the months to come. And it does provide very specific guidance for hospitality businesses, destinations, brands, restaurants, tours and attractions, and advises on the actions you can take now to be ready for each stage of recovery. We recommend you reviewing this information guide for your business to see what makes the most sense for you. So in summary, there's a lot of great best practices during this time. Make sure you're going in and sharing updates across multiple platforms because you don't know where your potential diners and potential new guests are looking for information. Don't post just once, continue to communicate, over communicate. Every time you change something about your operations, make sure that's being communicated across all your digital platforms. Make sure the information is very helpful, focus on safety, be brief, and at the end of the day, guys, just be honest, right? Be honest. Real quickly, just go in and make sure if you only have the time to focus on a few places in your digital presence, go take a look at your Google My Business listing, your Yelp profile, your TripAdvisor profile, and make sure that also your profiles with Visit Florida are the most accurate and up-to-date that they can be. So today, our main focus is improve safety, share the information, and ultimately grow your visibility. As so things continue to progress with welcoming visitors back to your place of businesses, these are going to be the three steps to keep in mind. Just follow the best practices and continue to inspire confidence with travelers and attract new customers to your business. 
thank you all for your attention during today's presentation. Let's open it up for questions. Do we have any? Yes, hi Angela and hi everyone. This is Ashley Jackson. I'm the Director of Membership Marketing with the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. We do have a good question right here. It says that, um, looks like there's a restaurant and they have done all the appropriate steps um, updating their dining room information for the Google My Business, um, but they get a message that says uh, that the information needs to be reviewed. And it seems like this has been going on for a few weeks. So it's showing that it's still closed even though they have updated this information. Do you have any advice for them? Yeah, so one of the things you can do is, 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 so Google has been automatically doing this based off of local ordinances, and so they may be trying to pull from an inaccurate place. Um, what we can do is, if you will make sure to email me directly after this, I can give you a support link to Google, so then that way you can file um, what we call a review with an actual GMB specialist for them to see why it's not automatically amending. Whenever you go in and make updates to your info tab within Google My Business, every time you make any single little update, it does go into a review process. Some of those are automated and some of those are a manual process. And it sounds like this one may be stuck in a manual process and it's not actually being reactivated. Great, thank you. And that was Jay who asked that question. And I can, um, I know your email is at the beginning of this presentation. And like we yes. said, it was going to be on our um, website, but I will also email him and provide your email as well. Okay. Um, we do have one more question. Um, how can somebody remove something like Uber Eats from their profile under the order section on Google My Business? Or how can they remove oh. information? Oh, that's a long, lengthy process. Let me, um, <laughs> this is this is a this is a high specialty uh, request because it, there's not there's not a simple answer for this one, right? There is actually, you have to go through a lengthy process of working with Google. It is possible to get this removed if you no longer want Uber Eats to service your location. That's perfectly fine, but there is a, a, a form you have to go through. And if I can get your contact information, I can send you to the right URL to start that process. Great, and I'll direct them in the right direction as well. Okay. And I think that's all of our questions for now. Um, those are the questions that came in. Angela, do you have any closing remarks or? Well, I mean, you know, guys, we do have some really big news. FRLA Marketing and Operations Summit is moving to this fall. It's no longer in August, but we're excited to see that it's going to be October 13th and 14th in Destin, Florida. Um, more details are going to be announced on this soon. I just really want to take a moment to thank you all so much for spending your valuable time with me today to learn more about digitally reopening your online presence. And thank you FRLA for inviting us today. Um, we always enjoy coming in and speaking to the membership here. If anyone has any questions or you want to learn more about Miles, um, please reach out to me directly. We're always here to help. We love Florida. We love FRLA. We love the hospitality industry. So hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much, Angela. Thank you.